There are over a million space objects in the solar system, ranging from tiny asteroids to gas giants. Some of them have been studied sufficiently well, while our knowledge about others is rather sparse. There are many objects still waiting to be discovered, and today we will talk about one of the coldest, darkest and remotest places in the solar system, the planetoid Sedna. But before we get to that, I'd like to remind you that we're also in Telegram. There are some exciting latest updates in the world of science and space. The Perseverance rovers landing on Mars, for example, sounds from Mars and the first panoramic snapshots can be checked out there. You will also get notifications about the latest videos on our YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't yet. This way you will definitely not miss our latest videos. And now, back to the story. In the late 20th century, there was a major breakthrough in studying remote corners of our solar system. 3,555 celestial objects have been discovered beyond Neptune's orbit since the 1990s. Most of them are not very large bodies, made up of water ice and frozen gases like methane and nitrogen. Transneptunian objects form conventional areas around the Sun, like the Kuiper Belt, the scattered disk and supposedly the Oort cloud. The Kuiper belt encompasses the solar system as a large ring at distances from 30 to 55 astronomical units from the center. It resembles the asteroid belt, only it is 20 times as wide and up to 200 times as massive. The Kuiper belt consists mainly of debris remaining after the formation of the solar system, although it does contain rather large objects as well, like Pluto, Charon, Haumea, Makemake and other planetoids. The borders of the scattered disk are more blurred. It consists of objects whose perihelion is over 35 astronomical units and whose orbits are elongated or lie closely to the ecliptic plane. Most of these objects are not very large and are quite gravitationally unstable. Most of the scattered disk's objects' orbits are posited to have been predefined by Neptune, with the latter having expelled them from the inner layers of the solar system, acting as some kind of a gravitational cannon. The largest space object in this area in space is the planetoid Eris. There is one more object worthy of our attention. It's a small planetoid called Sedna. That's what we'll talk about today. This dwarf planet was discovered on the 14th of November 2003 by American astronomers Michael Brown, Chadwick Trujillo and David Rabinovitz. At the time of discovery, it was thought to be the second largest object of the kind, beaten only by Pluto. However, very soon it found itself in the fifth place among all known transneptunian objects coming after Eris, Haumea and Makemake. As revealed by calculations of Sedna's orbit around the Sun, its trajectory is extremely elongated. Its perihelion is 76 astronomical units, which is two and a half times the radius of Neptune's average orbit. Sedna's aphelion is 942 astronomical units away from the Sun. Thus, the planetoid must be one of the remotest and apparently the coldest objects in our system detected so far. That is actually what has earned it its name. One of its discoverers, Michael Brown, has dubbed it after an Inuit goddess of sea animals. Sedna completes a full orbit around the center of the solar system within approximately 11,500 years. When discovered, it was 89.6 astronomical units away from the Sun. This is approximately twice the distance to Pluto. Sedna is now on its way to meet the Sun. It is expected to reach its perihelion around the year 2076. However, the Sun will not be visible as a disk from the dwarf planet's surface even from the closest point of its orbit. When watched from Sedna, our Sun will look like a very bright star, with a luminosity much higher than that of the Moon in our sky. Sedna's diameter is about a thousand kilometers. It is only 40% that of Pluto and slightly smaller than Charon. 
Unfortunately, there are no moons around Sedna. That is why it is hardly possible to gauge its mass with a high degree of accuracy. As it is, it is estimated at 1 to 10 percent that of our moon. In plain exact numbers, it could be anything from 8.3 times 10 to the power of 20 kilograms to 7 times 10 to the power of 21 kilograms. Only a special expedition to the dwarf planet's environs would yield much more precise data. Sedna's rotation period is about 10 hours, with the rotation axis tilting to the orbital plane at almost 12 degrees. The planetoid's bright red surface reflects around 32% of the light shed on it. Spectral analysis shows that the dwarf planet's outer layers are mostly made up of water ice and frozen gases, methane, ethane and nitrogen. Prolonged ultraviolet radiation treatment of the hydrocarbon sludge on the surface produced tholins, organic polymers containing nitrogen. It is these substances that give the planetoid surface its bright color. Sedna will be comparatively close to the Sun for about 200 years. In this time, its surface temperature will rise to 35.6 Kelvin or 237.6 degrees Celsius below zero. This will make some of the gases shrouding the planetoid evaporate, which in its turn will greatly rarefy the atmosphere. However, the most optimistic estimates show that its density will be 70,000 times less than that of the Earth at the very least. When the planetoid hits the escape trajectory from the Sun, its temperature will rather dramatically fall to a few degrees above absolute zero. It is thought that unlike on Triton, Pluto and Deris, there are no methane snow precipitations on Sedna on account of its low temperatures. Even though Sedna was discovered almost 30 years ago, scientists still don't have a unanimous opinion about it. One of the things on which they don't agree with each other is where it belongs, that is, whether it is part of the scattered disk or the Oort cloud. The Oort cloud is a hypothetical area in the solar system lying beyond the scattered disk and stretching for up to 100,000 astronomical units away from the Sun. Its borders are rather blurred. This part of the solar system looks like a spherical cloud made up of a great number of comet nuclei. It is from here that comets with enormous orbital periods of tens of thousands of years take off, as it were. The Hill Sphere, or the Sun's gravitational sphere of influence, is considered the cloud's outer boundary. The sphere's radius is about one light year. Sedna's orbit is so elongated that as it travels in the solar system, it traverses the entire area of the scattered disk and approaches the inner boundary of the Oort cloud. Some scientists believe that the object is too far from the main planets in the solar system and so their gravitational pull is negligible. Besides, Sedna was estimated never to have come close enough to Neptune to have had its orbit in any way affected. These clues lead us to believe that Sedna is much closer to the Oort cloud objects even though most of its orbit finds itself within the scattered disk. As Sedna is remote and barely studied, there are theories awaiting further confirmation. For example, modeling the process of radioactive decay suggests the possibility of there being a liquid ocean in the planetoid's interior. Calculations of the trajectories of several trans-Neptunian objects with elongated orbits, including Sedna, give grounds to believing that there is an undiscovered massive object located beyond the boundaries of the Kuiper Belt. Data collection is underway, and its results will either confirm or repudiate these assumptions. Even though Sedna is listed in NASA's program of the Solar System Exploration, no spacecraft is planned to be sent to it in the nearest decades. Perhaps it will be paid due scientific attention when the distance between the dwarf planet and the Earth is considerably smaller. Sedna may well be a really remote celestial object, but there are some even further than that out there in the solar system. For example, the object 2018 AG37, also known as Far Far Out, was spotted 132 astronomical units away from the Sun. It is the remotest object in the solar system that can be observed directly. 
Interestingly, while following their orbits, some celestial objects already known to us may recede from the Sun much further. For example, the aphelion of the comet C1992J1, spotted by David Rabinovitz in 1992, is 3,650 astronomical units. This means that it will take 78,000 years to complete a full orbit. There are many comets of this kind with elongated orbits and a mind-boggling orbital period that are still waiting to be discovered. Who knows? One of you might be able to do that at some point. Dear friends, we do our best to make our videos informative and great to watch. That is why your support means a lot to us. By hitting the like button, you help the channel to grow. If you'd like to give us some ideas about what other objects in the solar system we could tell you about, feel free to tell us in the comments. And also, there are some latest news about space on our channel and Telegram that you can check out while waiting for our new videos. Let's keep in touch.